This is the Wikipedia page for Debian, which is one of the most popular Linux distributions. Although they call it Unix-like here, they're also classifying it as GNU or GNU, which is another Linux controversy. You can look that up separately, I suppose. It's also very complex, and you'll see the pros and cons of that. So they have many different versions of it that have been produced over the years. It's now up to version 9.8, but... You can theoretically run it on either a dedicated machine or on a partition. On another machine, like a Mac or a Windows PC. So you would have a Windows partition and a Debian partition. And that's sometimes called a dual boot. But of course, if you've messed around with Linux, you know all of this. One of the things that kind of freaks me out a little bit is the idea of messing with the hard drive on my computer, even indirectly, because typically the way you'll do an install for Debian is that you'll have to partition the hard drive or have an external hard drive that allows you to run Linux from that drive. However, dual booting is very, very common. Typically, you'll have a partition on your hard drive that you'll have to create with dedicated software, or you'll have to do it with the Debian install disk. And you can specify the correct drives, but I'm always concerned that if I'm tampering with my Windows PC and I haven't been able to cut out my Windows hard drive, something could go horribly wrong. And Windows backup software, like what I've used, is not always 100% reliable, so it just seems like a huge risk. If you use a live CD or a live flash drive, though, you can bypass this problem. So it's as simple as downloading one of these images off of the Debian website. GNOME is maybe the most popular user interface. You can see that there are a bunch of different user interfaces for Debian which are supported. Like a lot of Linux distributions, people really like to modify Debian and try all kinds of interesting stuff with it. Which is, you know, an advantage and a disadvantage. I go with GNOME because it's very common. And so if you take this ISO and you burn it to a CD or DVD or a flash drive, you can boot your computer with that. And the live version is designed to run with a wide range of different computers, so you don't have to change the configuration each time you try a different computer. Now, on a flash drive, you figure that's going to be the closest to a real machine because it's rewritable. And I recently built one of those. I built a what's called a persistent live flash drive. And it's easier said than done. It took me about two or three days to figure out how. And I discovered there are no comprehensive tutorials on the internet that show you how to do it with version 9.8 without a bunch of bugs. So I'm attempting my own tutorial for it here. And very quickly, this will become obsolete when they come out with Debian 10, for example. And it also probably won't work with older versions of Debian because most of the failed tutorials, or rather tutorials that didn't apply to me that I attempted, were unusable because the versions of Debian that they were working with were older. And 9.8 is quite different from the previous ones I found. So I'll do that now. I'll show you how these live images work or not, depending on whether you've set them up correctly. So this is the main menu that you get if you boot into a Debian live CD or live flash drive. So you have the live boot right at the top there, you can also do it with localization support. And the current version of the live CD or 
USB. Not so many of the older ones, or at least not all of them, but the current version includes an installer in case you really like Debian and you want to try it out. As I've said, I'm paranoid about putting a partition on my Windows hard drive to do this, or even getting an external drive to experiment with. I'm just worried that the installer might accidentally install to my Windows boot disk. But if I load the live version here, it works just fine. But as you'll see, it does not work perfectly, whether in VirtualBox or otherwise. This is the most basic live version, and I'll show you what I'm talking about as soon as this boots up. Actually, to be fair, I'm going to have to drag this into the next part to show you exactly what's wrong. Okay, so over here you have the activities. This pulls up a dock that's very similar to what you see in Mac OS, or in Ubuntu for that matter. I apologize for the aspect ratio of this screen being messed up. It seems like VirtualBox, which I'm using to emulate this, has a bit of a problem with anything but VGA screens. Can't emulate anything else, at least in the install that I have. You see, you have Firefox and Evolution. I'm not, I've never used that actually. And you have a file manager and a help, and this will show you your other applications, much like in Android. But we'll gloss over that for now because it's not really what we're looking at, obviously. If you want to check out Debian, check it out. But I'm showing something fairly specific here. So if we open LibreOffice, which is a version of OpenOffice in the live version of Debian. First of all, it's a little bit slow because I'm running VirtualBox here, so it's naturally running in emulation and not blazing fast. That's just how emulation goes, and it's part of the reason why I wanted to build myself a live boot disk. And I could just plug in when I run and use the whole computer. In any case, we'll say this is LibreOffice as a test here, period. And then we can save up here. We save up here. We have a documents folder. See, this is a lot like Windows or Mac OS, actually. It's in your home folder, and you have your different content here, just like in Windows or Mac OS. And your styling is very much like Mac OS. This is actually the GNOME interface. This is every Debian distribution you can find, of course. So we'll say test, or maybe LibreOffice test. We'll be a little bit more specific. LibreOffice test, and we'll save it. It's in the recent documents there. We'll quit. Unfortunately, I have to deal with the uh, incompatible aspect ratio here. Exit LibreOffice. Sends us back to the desktop. And if I want to open that file, we'll go to the Documents folder. Actually, I should jump back there to show you what I just did. This is your file manager. See that? So if you click that, you get your home folder. And you can try other stuff too, obviously, but other locations. See? But let's stick with the Documents folder for now. Oops. That was another shortcut, a shortcut of another kind. So home, documents, or I could just double-click the documents folder here. And there it is. So if I open it up, just double-click, and there it is. Next, I'll show you what's the matter. 